Psalm 139. You're going to have to just listen or open your Bibles. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let us hear these words of the psalmist. Thanks be to God. The message version paraphrases the first verse. God, investigate my life. What would God see if God investigated your life? What would God see if God investigated the church communities? What would God see, I started to wonder, if God investigated Christianity? What would God see if God investigated humanity? What would God see? What would or does God see? And while I think many of us are willing to humble ourselves before God, I'd be a little worried about how God might respond when really looking and investigating all of these different aspects of our world and ourselves. But the scripture reminds us that we cannot really lie or hide from God. God knows us completely. The translation and poetic writing says, you hem me in, and thus God's hands have been used to create each piece and each person. So last week, the scripture of Jacob and Esau reminded us that we must see the face of those who have been entangled into difficult relationships of our lives. We were reminded there is power when we see the face of another and allow ourselves that each face has the ability to love and thus the ability to know God's spirit and to name God's presence. But sometimes the ability to see one another is easier and sometimes it is much harder. Sometimes it is so hard that we create excuses to avoid what we do not want to face and what we do not want to face us. And there are those in those moments when we cannot face other people. And there are those moments when we cannot face God. And at some point, we have all played each of these roles. We have played the person who needs to be faced, the person who can't be faced, or the one wanting to see someone else's face so desperately, but that other face won't see yours. And yet we must go back then and remind ourselves that God sees our face. God sees my face and your face and our entire beings and is constantly investigating and testing our hearts to see if we live into this potential of being beautifully and wonderfully creatively made. 
Yet we can only acknowledge our greatest potential if we acknowledge others' greatest potential and God's role in one another. So as we continue in the movie, The Greatest Showman, we're at our second to last week. And today we have a song where the lyrics don't match what's happening. This is the point where P.T. Barnum is trying to be more than just a circus. He's trying to continue to take steps into those larger spotlights. But the song, Never Enough, actually reminds us that the spotlights, the towers of gold, and the offerings of the world are not what is actually enough. The song, the actual song, Never Enough, has lyrics that express that there is this dream that is getting louder. But the dream has nothing to do with lights and everything to do with the fact that nothing matters if we don't have each other. Nothing is ever going to be enough if the dreams that we have are not shared and if our love is not intertwined with one another and as people of faith with God. And out in this world, let's be honest, this dream currently seems impossible to me. Many, including myself, live in our echo chambers telling us what we want to hear and feeling like there is just not enough for everyone. And we are allowing ourselves to become more separated and alienated from one another. And many, including ourselves, at times find ourselves so worked up in the kings and offerings that we sometimes forget that we need to be reminded as we were in this week's Bible study and that we will talk about again tonight that God did not want kings. Humans wanted kings. God has always wanted communities. And I'm sure that many everywhere have suffered broken relationships because of kings. And I keep examining those broken relationships and even asking the question, are they worth it to not be able to see one another's face? And that, I don't ask this to make anyone engage in unhealthy or unjust relationships. It's a question I've been pondering because there is probably something and there has been things that are so broken and have been so broken for so long and they just did not want to be faced. We live in a society that doesn't face each other. But I then think about all the people in this room. Look around safely. Don't breathe on each other. But look around or think about the people in this room and the people who are part of this community, the people you love, the people you shared your life with, the people who have faithfully walked with you, prayed for you, and always find ways to see God in you. And realize that the shines of those spotlights, the tower of gold, and the offerings of the world are trying to tear us away from one another. But that we have people in this room who we share our life with, who we faithfully walk with, who see God in one another. And that the powers that separate us do not know about our love and our trust to see the powers of God. The powers that separate us did not know Bob Gibson or Mildred. They do not know Carol Frenzen's deep mama bear passion for her sons and her swimmers. They do not know the beauty of Jackie's compassionate tears that always reflect her heart. The world focuses on places of darkness and little does it know that there are places and people and communities like here that continue to put God's love first. And God knows that. God is investigating how we are wonderfully made. God knows how beautiful this community can be. And God's presence is around us when we remind ourselves 
that the worldly towers of God are not what should be guiding us. Or not the worldly towers of God, the worldly towers of humans. It's 2020, just go with me. The 2020 craziness should not be guiding us. That the buildings, even when we come to the build, the buildings are not where our faith resides. And that love and care for each other is where the true spirit of God resides. That is where we find enough in a world that seems so empty. And the question that the song asks is the same question as your pastor, I ask you. Will you share this dream with me? Amen.